Christian, you're a, a molecular biology major. So explain to me what you're actually doing to fight COVID-19. Yeah, so essentially, um, I researched for a doctor of epidemiology, uh, Patricia Cummings, Dr. Patricia Cummings, and on the spread of COVID-19 uh, in the Coachella Valley. Uh, we took into account globally available statistics, um, such as reproduction number, or are not as probably you know it as, and um, hospitalization rates, uh, incubation time, so all these globally available statistics. And we adjusted them for our valley's demographics. So essentially, we created a model that could uh, predict the spread of COVID-19 in our valley. So we looked at our valley's uh, demographics, like uh, the comorbidities, the, the presence of that, market shares of hospitals, and, and created this model. Are there other students that are working on the modeling for their specific areas? Um, for their specific areas, I'm not sure about other students, but I worked with a, a grad student on this model who's, who's a great kid, too. Uh, he's at USC. But uh, it was just us and then uh, Dr. Patricia Cummings. All right. So that's pretty cool. A little back to pack uh, correlation there, uh, representation with, <laughs> I'm with sorry, USC. I shouldn't say that. Yeah, no, boo <laughs> USC. <laughs> Especially if you pay, play tennis just like you do, uh, then I'm sure that there's really a, a significant rivalry there. Uh, in terms of some of the results, what do you guys take away from some of the data that you gather? What we took away is that, um, you know, there is a real concern if no quarantine was done. So if there was no social distancing measures, there was no quarantine fraction, so a percentage of people that uh, would stay home entirely. Um, we predicted a lot of uh, infections in our valley, but based on these social distancing measures, that, that flattening of the curve was done. So that was, so, so far, so good. Uh, the, the county officials took into account the, the social distancing. You know, Christian, for me, and, and I certainly don't have the biology background that you, you have, I'm a little bit more of a news junkie at this point, just like probably most Americans right now, trying to get as much information <laughs> and data as possible, and, and they're watching the news. I, I would imagine you sort of being on the front lines, gathering this data and doing some of this modeling that you're seeing, you're watching the news maybe differently than most. So can you just explain, like, when you see news coverage of COVID-19, what resonates for you? You know, I, I, I try to look at the, the doctors that are, are talking, and I, I'm listening to them just as much as, uh, you know, anyone else's. But um, it, it's hard right now. The news is, is all over the place in terms of, of COVID-19. You have uh, our president who's saying, uh, you know, hydroxychloroquine is an effective treatment, even though we don't have any idea about that. Um, it's only in testing. So there's just a lot of, uh, of news out there. Um, so it's, it, you know, it's hard to distinguish right now what is, uh, what is real and what's not, but it's tough uh, to be a journalist right now because um, there's just, it, it's, it's hard and a lot of people don't even know who are, who are doctors really, so it's, it's tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you speak the truth in a big way, uh, at least with that last statement. I, I want to circle back to the results. Anything that surprised you after you did the research that you didn't anticipate? Um, nothing uh, shocked me is pretty consistent with um, a lot of uh, what other models were showing. Um, I guess what what's we were afraid of, especially, is that our population is generally quite old. Uh, coming from the Coachella Valley, we have a, we have a large elderly population, so we were a bit concerned about that. Uh, but it turns out it, it was if we social distance, you know, it would work out okay. But um, yeah. It, it, that's when you use the phrase like, okay, give me some context there on, on just how significant things would be with social distancing and what the models tell you without it. Well, the model with, without social distancing, with no quarantine fraction, you know, infections would just skyrocket nearly like we predicted nearly half of the population would be infected in a short amount of time and which would just catastrophically override our local healthcare system. But with social distancing, the more quarantine, the more social distance, uh, most more social distancing, uh, we could get those numbers down to to single digits, uh, even you know double digit, single digit range per day type of thing. Uh, so yeah. yeah, you know, Christian, I had an opportunity, and I've had a few opportunities now to talk to some former student athletes from this conference that are on the front lines as. Med 
medical personnel. And I think what's interesting about it is when I asked them the question about how sports has impacted what they're doing now, or at least changed their mindset, their time in school and being an athlete, certainly there, there is some correlation on, on sort of the mental makeup there. I'm curious for you as a tennis player, and I think your sport's more unique because of the individual aspect of it, but how right. has sports shaped your approach here when you look at COVID-19 and you look at some of the research you've done? You know, I would say it, it's just getting right into it. I, I'm not really, I'm not, I don't question like doing some work, you know, it's like, I'm so used to just getting up and going to practice. So it's like, I go, I'll, I'll just go straight into whatever, you know, I'm told to do uh, and, and kind of just get into the thick of things. Yeah. Like there's no need to, you know, dance around the fact I'm ready to just like go in and research and uh, look up things and, and start modeling. And it's like, I, I would say that tennis has just prepared me for that, that aspect of just being ready to just go in and work at something a hundred percent. Christian, getting back to some of the news stories that I've seen, there's so much about people passing away, contracting the virus, shelter in place. These are trigger words that have been thrown out right. there pretty consistently over the last month or so. I've seen some stories about seniors in high school who are contemplating maybe not going uh, away and maybe not even having that option for their freshman years at certain colleges. I haven't heard a lot from current college students and the effect that COVID-19 has had on their daily lives. What are the conversations that you're having with you and your friends and, and even your teammates about this? You know, I keep up with my teammates and uh, my friends over Zoom and, and FaceTime, but, you know, it, it is tough for us. It, it was quite disruptive to just be whisked out of, of school. But uh, what, what makes it a little bit easier is that perspective that you're talking about. People are dying. People, uh, you know, aren't as lucky to go back to homes as maybe some of us athletes are. Um, so, you know, it, it is tough in, in the scope of the have my college experience disrupted, but compared to other people, it's, you know, I feel blessed in a lot of ways. Are you scared to go back to campus? I'm, I'm not scared if, um, you know, if we have a treatment or a vaccine or we have, we've adequately social distance, but uh, I would say right now we probably shouldn't go back to campus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, I, it's always shocking to me, especially from your sport. If you go out there, you're not having, the close interaction, but, you know, are you playing with a, you know, a latex glove on, you know, because you're touching the ball as it's going, you know, just thinking about some of the changes that we could see in every single sport, not just yours and tennis, but uh, across the board. Christian, we usually end the show uh, by asking a lot of our guests how the last couple of weeks and months with COVID-19 has sort of changed their perspective. You've been in the thick of things from a research uh, standpoint. You obviously had to leave campus at Stanford because of everything going on. How how has the last couple of weeks and months changed your perspective? You know, I, I realized I've, I've taken to, uh, I've taken for granted um, normalcy in a lot of ways and in going to practice, waking up at, you know, early and going to practice and then going to school and then doing homework and then seeing friends. I was like, you know, that's a, a tedious thing to do every day. You know, at some times I would say that, but now I'm like, I would do anything to get up and go practice right now and, and go to class and, you know, I've, I've really gained a perspective of, uh, you know, how much I appreciate a normal life, you know, and that extraordinary things are sometimes not always great because yeah. this seems a bit like otherworldly right now that we have a, this big pandemic and, uh, you know, I would just want things to go back to the way they were. Yeah, Christian, I know you speak for everyone when you say something like that. <laughs> I cannot wait yeah. to get back to uh, a normal life and whatever that new normal is going to be. But just being right. out there, we I think a lot of us have taken for granted the situations that we had prior to COVID-19 wreaking havoc on, right. on all of our lives. But uh, Christian, look, appreciate you giving us a couple of minutes here. Uh, really, I think I speak for everyone when I say we, we thank you for those, some of the work that you were doing in terms of the, the modeling. Uh, against COVID-19. <laughs> Stay healthy and good luck back getting back to campus real soon. Great. Thank you so much for this.